אבל זה בעיה להיות כמדע. Yesterday, uh, uh, but it's also a very.
popular public holiday yeah. so it's not for war. Special it's it's Monday. Monday. Yeah, it's Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. And thank you so much for again for the invitation to the, the opening of the Greek Film Festival. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Much. So at the Austin Film Archive, the guy who was... Uh, How are you? How was that? You did go not? Really? I thought you did. Hey, wait. Wait. <laughs> Gentlemen, herzlich willkommen and welcome to the press conference on the occasion of the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Hellenic Republic, His Excellency Nico Stendias. Minister Schallenberg, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Dear Nikos, dear friend, it's a true pleasure to welcome you back again in Vienna. And I have to say, in, in, in recent months, we have seen a very intensive succession of meetings between Greek and Austrian ministers, and you just met three days ago, you told me, the Austrian uh, Chancellor Nehammer at the renowned Delphi Economic Forum. And I believe it's a proof of our extremely close and friendly relations between our countries. Um, as far as the economy goes, I mean, trade relations have quickly and very strongly recovered from the COVID backlash. And, and actually, in fact, they're going beyond what we had before, before the COVID, and that is also due to the fact of the very strong economic performance of your government and the uh, determined action you took to overcome the effects of the great financial crisis we all have to face together. Um, and I believe it's, it's very reasonable to assume, we just had a brief discussion on that, that your country again will be the most favorite destination for Austrian tourists um, in the coming summer. As far as tourism goes, by the way, I mean, I know that your government is, is pursuing a diversification strategy um, reaching beyond the well-known, to Austrian well-known islands and beaches to the superb mountain regions in Greece. And I believe there's some know-how Austrian and Austrian companies could offer there as far as tourism in mountain regions is concerned. Um, both our countries, Greece and Austria, are culture nations. We are proud of our culture, we're proud of our history, and we share an excellent, uh, excellent cultural relations. And Against this background, I'm very pleased that technical discussions are taking place between the Kunsthistorische Museum and the Acropolis Museum on mutual loans of the Parthenon frieze. Our common goal is to contribute to the understanding of its universal significance for European, for the European cultural heritage. And this is an, a very special case, and it is important. It's important beyond the, the borders of, of, of Greece, because we all know that this is the cradle not the Parthenon as such, but the Acropolis and Athens, the cradle of European democracy. So it is also uh, for us of, of importance, and I believe, and I'm very hopeful that the talks can move on very quickly and the marvelous will be at display on display in, in Athens. Um, but our relations are much more than trade and tourism. Um, we share many common interests um, for instance, on the Western Balkans, it's a common neighborhood between us. We both know that this is a region very, which is very vulnerable <coughs> to influences from third countries or third part of parties, and that the EU path of the Western Balkans is, and that's a view we share, is not a nice-to-have issue. It's a must. It's a geostrategic litmus test for the European Union. And 2022, we had some progress. We had you know, candidate status for Bosnia. We had the opening of section negotiation for North Macedonia and Albania. We had a d decision in principle for visa liberalization for Kosovo. But we all are aware that 2023 will be a difficult year. There are no low-hanging political fruits. And this year is the 20th anniversary of the summit of Thessaloniki, where we all together gave a promise, a promise that each country of this region will become full member of the European Union. I believe it's high time uh, to put our money where our mouth is 
and and to make this region understand that they are that they are welcome and they are part of our political agenda. And that's why I've proposed this creation of the Friends of the Western Balkans, because I believe we have to make very sure that there are no true class society among candidate countries. The Western Balkans are on the path to, to towards European Union, and we have to make sure that they stay there. Other issues, one issue which always brings us together, and luckily you might say, is illegal migration. Here again, um, I'm very thankful for the outstanding cooperation we are having and for your efforts to modernize and streamline your legislation. And it's, it's I believe, believe, a very positive sign that the number of migrants on Greek islands have gone down. But we all know that this pressure will never diminish. We will always be faced with migration and pressures. And we both have experienced um, this, uh, the fact that sometimes you can, be, you can feel very alone, abandoned by European partners if you're faced with a migration crisis. I remember the discussions we had in springtime 2020. And last year, Austria was affected in particular. We had over 110,000 asylum seekers. Two thirds of them have not been registered before arriving in Austria. So they have passed several European states, and none of them actually applied the national laws, you could say very bluntly. So this is something where, we, where we're working very strongly together. We have a common interest. We need a functioning external Schengen border. You have all the support from our side um, in this matter, and I know that we can count on you also in the future. And last but not least, another common interest for us, um, you're working hard and very successful to, successfully to become an energy hub. And we support that too. But we know both that one thing is necessary for becoming an energy hub is stability in the Eastern Mediterranean. And that international law is applied in the Eastern Mediterranean. And here again, I can show you of the continued support by the Austrian government in this endeavor. I'm very uh, I'm pleased to see that relations between Greece and, and another neighbor have eased and have become more positive. I'm talking obviously about Turkey, and I hope that this policy can continue. It has your handwriting on it, I know, and, and, but here again I can assure you of our continued support and solidarity. Thanks again, my friend, for being here. My dear Alexander, thank you so much for your remarks, and uh, allow me to say how pleased I am to be again uh, in Vienna today. As you were kind enough to say, this is one of our many meetings, and also this Saturday on the sidelines of the Delphi Forum, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Chancellor Neham. Uh, well, today's we discuss, today we discussed ways to enhance even more our relation, if that can be made possible. Uh, economic relations is a field in which we could do more. We will be very much uh, happy to attract more uh, investments from Austria. There's lot, lots we could do on energy. Thank you for mentioning it. An electrical interconnector between Greece, Austria, and Germany through Albania and the Western Balkans could be uh, an important item on the future energy cooperation between us. Also, we discussed the need to raise awareness and enhance effectiveness at the international level in combating illicit trafficking, illicit trafficking of cultural goods, in protecting cultural heritage. And to this end, please allow me to express my deep satisfaction for the announcement you just made uh, during your remarks, uh, having to do with the Parthenon fragments, the two fragments here in uh, Vienna, one rather big ones, one is 25 centimeters, the other one is 65 centimeters. And I have to say this uh, will move uh, into a series of uh, highly symbolic gestures uh, and they may create a positive momentum. Uh, the regional government of Sicily in 2022, Pope Francis in January 23, were returned to Greece part of the Parthenon uh, sculptures, so this will be the third one. And this for us is of huge, huge importance. And also beyond the very fact of uh, this, uh, we believe that we'll create a momentum which we could uh, use in our discussions in London, uh, which I'm, I hope I will be able to successfully conduct in, in the end of the day. Uh, now, uh, 
We discussed about our close cooperation in the European Union and in international organizations such as the United Nations. As you know, we have exchanged candidates. Thank you for your support for a bit for the United Nations Security Council. Uh, also, thank you for your support in migration. Thank you for realizing how difficult it is sometimes and how lonely it feels. Uh, we discussed, uh, as it is uh, of course, not for the Russian invasion of Ukraine and a common position that respect for territorial integrity and sovereignty should always be uh, on our agenda. We, uh, I would like to thank you uh, on another issue for uh, your contribution to INFICIP uh, in Cyprus. We are deeply in gratitude to Austria. And thank you for your remarks on the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, I have to say things are much calmer now, uh, but yet we know that we could count and we can count and we will count on your support. We are pragmatists. We hope that after the Turkish elections we may be able to, to try again to find uh, a way out on our difference with Turkey. But of course that can only be based on international law and international law of the sea. Uh, again. Uh, Austria, speaking about international law of the sea, Austria is a proud example because Austria is a landlocked country and yet again uh, is a signatory and has ratified UNCLOS, the international law of the and sea convention. Well, I hope that other countries will follow your proud example. There are not many that have not subscribed, but there is one that's quite important for us. Uh, well, thank you so much, really. It was such a great pleasure again to be uh, in Vienna today. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Ministers. We now have the time for a couple of questions. Um, the Austrian Press Agency, Mr. Bospinik, please. Thank you very much. I've got a question for you, uh, uh, Foreign Minister. You have um, written on Twitter that you are also going to meet uh, Mr. Rafael Grossi today. Uh, what is the purpose of uh, your meeting? Is it about the new Turkish power plant that you have likened to Chernobyl? Uh, what, what is the position of, uh, um, of Greece? What, what steps uh, do you want to take? And uh, to your Austrian colleague, uh, what is the position of Austria regarding this uh, new Turkish power plant that is built and financed by Russia? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, of course, I didn't say that Akuyu, if that's the one you mean, is Chernobyl. Uh, far from it. What I expressed is, and I do express always, my anxiety that the norms according to which any nuclear station operates are to the highest level. And let me say, Akuyu for us is right next door. So, oh, of course, uh, the fact that uh, Director Grossi was there uh, makes me calmer, but I would like to learn from him uh, the status of that nuclear reactor. But it's not only that, and it's not, only the, it's not the main reason I'm in him. Uh, the nuclear plant in Zaporizhia poses uh, a direct threat to the overall region, to Greece, but I believe also to Austria. And I would like to be informed uh, on what's happening there and how we could be of assistance to him. I have discussed that with him last year. I'm going to discuss this with him uh, during this visit to Vienna as well. Thank you. Well, it won't be a surprise because it's a long-standing policy of the Austrian government that we don't consider nuclear energy to be a sustainable source of energy or a green source of energy. So if you ask me uh, or my opinion on any nuclear power plant being built in Europe or in the vicinity of Europe, then you won't find me cheering. I believe that this is uh, um, a policy we accept, obviously, the sovereignty of every state to decide on their own energy mix but it doesn't prevent us from having a very clear view and policy on that. And on Saporizhia, I can simply underline what you said. I'm in a very constant uh, exchange with, with uh, Rafael Grossi, who he and his agency are doing a tremendous job, uh, not only in Ukraine, but also in Iran and other issues. This is probably one of the most important parts of, of you know, the, the Vienna International Security Hub we're having here. And, and um, Saporizhia is a true headache for all of us and has to be a true headache for all of us. 
think there was one more question in the back. Uh, Bruce Fiansons. Uh, I have a question to both of you. Uh, there is also a big crisis in the uh, South Sudan at the moment, uh, and the UN expects around uh, 800,000 refugees uh, because of the fights there. Um, Mr. Daniels, do you also expect refugees from the South Sudan in Greece, uh, and also Mr. Schallenberg? Well, we just finished. Thank you for, for, for this show. We just finished uh, uh, evacuation of Greek citizens' operation in Sudan. Unfortunately, uh, the situation in Khartoum and uh, in Darfur is not getting any better. So, yes, refugees are expected to move from Sudan to safer uh, areas. What I hope that we can do and we can facilitate is them staying next to the Sudanese border while we're trying our best uh, to, to bring a truce and a normalization at a, at, at a later stage. Them leaving uh, Sudan for Europe, I don't think, helps them, and I don't think helps Europe. Well, I, have, I can only underline, we are, we are I'm very thankful, and I've said already at the beginning of the week to our European partners who helped us to evacuate the Austrian um, citizens in the last couple of days. I believe this was a very good sign of, of lived European solidarity. On the migration issue, yes, like any other crisis, there is this risk. Um, I believe that the best we can do also is to try to help on the spot, meaning that uh, the turmoil stops, that there is a, a ceasefire, that normality can return. We are far from there yet, but I believe there is leverage on the European side. We can do our best, and we have to help the people to have a perspective in their own country. And what we are experiencing now, a coup and then a counter-coup, is something we, we thought might be, or we had hoped that might be the past in Africa. But now we're seeing it, we're seeing it in Mali, we're seeing it in other states. So this is a situation which we are following very closely and we are concerned about and believe the best we can do, as I said, is to use our leverage to pressure the partners uh, in, the, in the respective countries to return to the path of normality. This concludes the press conference. Thank you very much for your interest. Thank you. Herzlich willkommen and welcome to the press conference on the occasion of the visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Hellenic Republic, His Excellency Nikos Dendias. 
Minister Schallenberg, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Dear Nikos, dear friend, it's a true pleasure to welcome you back again in Vienna. And I have to say, in, in, in recent months, we have seen a very intensive succession of meetings between Greek and Austrian ministers. And you just met three days ago, you told me, the Austrian uh, Chancellor Nehammer at the renowned Delphi Economic Forum. And I believe it's a proof of our extremely close and friendly relations between our countries. Um, as far as the economy goes, I mean, trade relations have quickly and very strongly recovered from the COVID backlash. And, and actually, in fact, they're going beyond what we had before, before the COVID. And that is also due to the fact of the very strong economic performance of your government and the determined action you took to overcome the effects of the great financial crisis we all have to face together. Um, and I believe it's, it's very reasonable to assume we just had a brief discussion on that, that your country, again, will be the most favorite destination for Austrian tourists um, in the coming summer. As far as tourism goes, by the way, I mean, I know that your government is, is pursuing a diversification strategy, um, reaching beyond the well-known, to Austrian well-known islands and beaches, to the superb mountain regions in Greece, and I believe there's some know-how Austrian and Austrian companies could offer them. Thank you.